Welcome to Electron Online, and now we're going to talk a little bit more about some of the subtypes of supernovae that we have. There's two main types. There are the type 1A, which are caused by the white dwarfs that are exploding, and the type 2, which is the supermassive red giants that then explode, that have a core collapse explosion. So those are the, the only real two reasons why supernova explosions occur. And so the way we've traditionally been able to tell them apart is with the type 1A, since it's a white dwarf that's exploding, it's basically a ball of carbon. And so when a white dwarf explodes, you would not expect to see any hydrogen or helium, which is normally a large part of any star that would explode. So carbon is usually devoid of, of, um, of the white dwarf explosions are usually devoid of hydrogen and helium. So those signatures, when we look at the light curve, we do not see any resemblance of any significant amount of hydrogen or helium in those explosions. So that's how we're able to tell them apart. And with a large core collapse explosion, like a type 2 supernova, the outer layers of the star have so much hydrogen and helium in them that we expect to see lots of signatures of hydrogen and helium. So they have a super red giant, so a very large red giant. So let's call it a red super giant. And when it explodes, there's so much hydrogen and helium contained within the outer layers of the star that when it explodes, you would expect to see those signatures so a lot. There's a lot of hydrogen and there's a lot of helium signatures in the explosion. So those were the traditional types. But what we found was that in some cases, and especially like in the type 1b and the 1c, which we still knew were core collapse stars, there's, in the case of the 1b type, there's no hydrogen to be seen. And in the case of the 1c type, there's no hydrogen and helium to be seen. For example, the supernova that occurred in the Large Magellanic Cloud in 1987 was one of those types. It was a type 1c. So normally we associate 1a with white dwarfs, and it's a misnomer to think that 1b and 1c are also white dwarf stars. No, they're not. They are large, super, large red giants that explode, but for some reason they've been stripped from their hydrogen before the explosion occurred. We know that some stars go through tremendous upheaval towards the end of the red giant stage where they become variable stars. And sometimes due to the uh, very large extreme changes in pressure and energy being radiated out from the star, sometimes the outer layers do work themselves loose from the star. And so when the star does explode, the hydrogen layer the, uh, that's primarily there is no longer there. And in some rare cases, neither hydrogen or helium is still there because of the, what happens to the late stages of the star. So before the star then collapses, the, the core collapse, you would find that hydrogen and helium is mostly stripped off, and so when the explosion occurs, we don't see any strong signature of the hydrogen and the helium. Usually what happens is we study the light curves of those explosions, and we look for the absorption lines that happen when the electrons that jump up and down within the orbits of the of the material that explodes out, if there's hydrogen and helium there, they will absorb specific wavelengths of light. If hydrogen and helium is not there, those absorption lines are simply missing, and therefore we know that hydrogen and helium was not present in the explosion. So we do realize that even though all of these are core collapse type explosions, like type 2 supernovas, we call them 1b and 1c to indicate whether or not there was hydrogen present or whether or not there was helium present or both. So that's how we can tell the difference. But again, even though, and there's even more subtypes than that, but to keep things simple for us, we can simply imagine that there's a type 1A and there's a type 2. And some of the type 2s may or may not have hydrogen present or helium present when they explode. And if they don't, we call them a different type, but they're basically all the type 2-like supernovas. Large stars, large red giants that explode when their, car, when their core fills with iron, as opposed to the type 1a, is we have a carbon remnant of a star, a white dwarf, that when it exceeds the Shandaskar limit, it implodes on itself and it explodes. And so those are the two main types of supernovas that exist.